uh, project vital signs. We will start with slide number seven. Uh, let me give you a little history of how this all came about. Uh, a few years back, I was visiting with a physician friend of mine who is a head of anesthesia at a major hospital, and the hospital was going through a patient management system installation. It was the first major software deployment at the organization, and the doctors were involved in the physicians and pharmacists and all that. And this day, when I was visiting with him, he had just come out of a project meeting. Uh, a consulting firm was doing all the work for them, and he was rather perturbed. And I thought it was something to do with his medical profession, uh, patients not doing well and all that. I, I inquired, he said, no, it's not that. Uh, these meetings I go to are very bothersome. He said, these, and he used the euphemism, you people, because I'm in project management profession, and he's talking about project managers. And he said, you people have no sense of reporting project status correctly if there's only two states. Everything is fine or it is bad. He said, they'll go for meeting after meeting, things are fine, things are fine, then all of a sudden they are $50,000 behind, overrun, or maybe 10 weeks behind. He said, what we need is more reporting on vital signs, very much like we do in operating rooms, in uh, you know post-operating rooms and post-recovery. He said, we have a variety of vital signs. They have uh, normal, they have uh, behind normal, and they are, you know, we combine the vital signs, we look at a patient, and that fascinated me, that discussion. And uh, he concluded with a statement that all you people measure is time and money, and both are useless. He said, money is very much like I would ask you how much medicine you've taken, and you tell me half of it, I declare you're half cured. He said, well, you know, the medicine could actually be killing you with side effects. So taking the half a medicine is not half a cure, and all of this just kept, you know, lighting lights in my brain. But that's true. All we do is cost and schedule. So when I came back to my office, I collected my staff, and I told them what the doctor had to say, and uh, we had, had you know, we started a program. So we should do very much like doctors do, uh, and that's the origin of Project Vital Sign. So let's talk about this, and towards the end, you will see a relationship with how we manage projects to how we should manage projects, status, and portfolios. So let's go to slide number eight. A percent complete is insidious, and most project managers love to use it. Our software, scheduling software and project management software, love to do that. And in a marathon, the midpoint is not halfway to the finish. In any race, midway uh, point is not halfway to the finish. In fact, unless you finish, you are not finished. So it's it's a percent complete, and time spent is totally useless information from a project management point of view. Uh, slide number eight. Uh, percent. My, a friend of mine, George Glasser, a superb project manager, bless his soul. He's managing projects upstairs for the Lord now. Uh, he used to say that the original estimate for the fantasy and now a project status is the other fantasy, so it is useless. George was a very kind and gentle person. I believe original estimate was a fantasy, and now people have resorted to telling outright lies. It's like going to a doctor and doctor saying, what is your blood pressure? And you ask them, what should it be? And that, that is your blood pressure. Not a good thing. So let's get to slide number 10. This is very interesting. Project management as we know it, and those of, of you who belong to PMI, Project Management Institute, uh, should know that uh, project progress is based on how construction management was done over the centuries and and all the time. Work and progress are quite linear unless things go bad. So if you look at a journeyman mason and 
the construction, how many square feet of wall they construct at a given time is quite linear uh, for them. At um, you know how many, um, how much electrical wire somebody can uh, string, it is a quite a linear process. You spend more time, you get more work done. That is where the percent time and percentage work okay and well because there is a relationship. Now, if this is not true in knowledge work, so if we go to slide number 11, we in information technology, we in business, we in anything other than pure construction are in knowledge work. And in knowledge work, if you look at the first uh, diagram on the left-hand side, there's time. And you know, if I'm writing code, I may be so productive that within the first 15 minutes, I've written you know, three-fourths of the program. Uh, if I'm designing a work breakdown structure, I may have done the decomposition of the half of the project within the first couple of hours. Uh, and then nothing happens. Uh, I am in a, in a thinking block, I am in an information block, I am just, you know, waiting. So my time may be progressing, my work is not progressing, then I pro progress more, but however, at a slower rate of progress. So my first progress was very steep, then none, and then uh, uh, slower, and this happens to all the knowledge workers. This happens to salespeople. You make the first three calls, and nobody answers, and nobody buys anything. In the fourth call, you sold a house to be people and a, and a block, so that happens. On the right-hand side, this is more, you know, the, the reality is that sometimes I get the work done very, very fast in a short time, and then, as I work more, there are more problems. I discover more errors. And I come to a point where you even stop working because if you work anymore, you'll find more errors. So, or what I did was wrong, now I have to retract myself and start again. So time and progress are not related. And as long as we acknowledge this, then status reporting, vital signs and all become very well because this is what the doctor, I, I had multiple meetings with my physician friend after the first meeting and this is what he talked about in weight loss. This is what he talked about when medication is given to people in, uh, in, in real life. So we have to learn to see that. So that was a very good basics of what took place. Slide number 12. There are four things we need to manage in a project's health. Uh, first of all, strategy. Why this project? It could be it's a year-long project. It's a six-month-long project that by the third month, the corporate or business or organization strategy has changed. It may be due to changing economy outside. It could be because our company is being merged with some other company. Uh, and our strategy is changing. It could be my organization has a new CEO who thinks uh, things differently than the last one did and that the way the organization is run has changed. So does that make any effect on ongoing projects? That is seldom, if ever, looked at in, in projects when they get started. We assume the strategy that it was approved under is a strategy to use through the project. And so many projects come out on the other side that are now successful in tactics. However, they do not meet the organization's current strategy. So they are useless in use, but they are successful in completion. That's a dichotomy itself. In